I have a dream that one day, no matter how long it may take us, as long as we have faith in our cause and uh, an unconquerable willpower, knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. This is a time of challenge to our interests and our values. And it's a time to test our wisdom and our skills. This will not be a campaign of half measures. And we will accept no outcome but victory. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. Well, good morning. It's good to see all of you with us this morning. If you're watching on live stream, that we are glad that you are with us this morning as well. And uh, if you're with us and you're with us for the very first time, you don't have a church home, uh, you're in the right place because neither do we. <laughs> You've already heard this morning, but it's, it's going to be a few more weeks before we move back over into our remodeled and updated space. And we'll keep you up to date on that and let you know what's happening. And uh, while we've been over here in this season, we've been preaching or talking about politics. And we're going to do that for one more Sunday. We're going to wrap that up today. We've been in this series called Oh Say Can't You See. We're going to finish that series up today. And then next week, we're going to launch a new series talking about wandering in the wilderness. Seems appropriate for where we're at. And uh, what I know about uh, God's people when they wandered in the wilderness is that the lessons they learned in the wilderness served them for when they got to the promised land. And so we're going to start that next week. But this morning, we're going to finish up this series, Oh Say can't you see? We are just oh, uh, just uh, uh, around a month away from election day. And as we finish up this series this morning, I've decided that what I'm going to do is share with you uh, my candidate of choice. Oh, it got quiet all of a sudden, didn't it? <laughs> to share with you who I'm going to vote for. Um, now, churches aren't allowed uh, by the United States of America because we're tax-exempt organizations to endorse a particular candidate, but that doesn't mean that I can't tell you who I'm going to vote for. And so when I walk into the polling place on November 8th and I walk into the place where I'm going to mark my ballot and I see the names under the place where you can vote for the President of the United States, I'm going to go down on the list. And I'm going to check the box that says write in. And in write in, I'm going to put two words. The church. Now, I'm not really going to do that. And I wouldn't encourage you to do that. But here's the point I'm making. We've been talking about this as the fourth week We've been talking about this for now. Not one candidate has all the answers, nor will one candidate ever have all the answers. Not one candidate is the person that everyone wants them to be, nor will one candidate ever be the person that everyone wants them to be. But I believe there is one that does have all the answers, and that is the church. And so my vote for president will be the church. And that's what this entire series has been about, is that it's not about the president. It's not about Congress. It's not about the Supreme Court. It's about the church, because the church has the message. Uh, I've, I've told you this in this series, uh, that, that God will not skip the church house to fix the White House. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take one more look at that. We've been looking at the story of Jonah and how it parallels with where we're at today. And so if you have a Bible with you, you can open up to Jonah if you want to click there on your phone or whatever. I'm going to put a piece of the scripture up on the screen for you here in just a second. Um, let, me, let me fill you in on the story. So Jonah was this prophet 
uh, this person that God would give a message to, and then he was supposed to share that message with God's people. And in this particular instance, he comes to Jonah and he says, I have a message that you need to deliver to Nineveh. We've talked to you about Nineveh and how it was a very... uh, uh, it, it was a place that was acting in very evil ways and very wicked ways. And uh, his message was, you need to go to Nineveh and tell them how they're acting and how they're behaving and that they need to change their ways or I will literally wipe them off the face of the earth. Now, let me just pause here for a second and tell you that when most of us hear about the story of Jonah or even hear me say those words, we think that God's just going to smite them. Smite, that's a good biblical word, isn't it? (laughs) That God's just going to destroy them. That God's going to just reach down and just knock them off the globe. But that's not necessarily what Jonah means when you look at the words in the book of Jonah. What it means is God might allow them to be destroyed. God might allow them to be overcome speaks a little different into our context, doesn't it? And so Jonah was supposed to deliver this message, and uh, he didn't want to. Can you imagine why? And so he ran the other way. He gets on a ship. There's this big storm that God creates, and uh, the sailors on the ship throw Jonah overboard because they figure out he's the reason for the storm. This big fish swallows Jonah up. Jonah prays in the belly of whale. It's the first time in the entire story he prayed. Three days later, the whale or the fish spits Jonah out on dry land, and that's where we pick up today in Jonah chapter 3. I'm going to read the first five verses, so just follow along with me. I'm reading out the English Standard Version. Here's what it says. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Remember, it had already come to Jonah one time, and he ran the other direction. After he has his experience in the belly of the fish and is vomited back up on the dry land, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. That literally means get up and go. Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time and said, Get up and go. Go to Nineveh and call out against it the message I tell you. Now I want you to pay attention to this. God didn't come to Jonah and say, go to Nineveh and live a good life. He didn't say, go to Nineveh and be a good example. He didn't say, go to Nineveh and try not to cuss and try not to drink and and try not to do any of those things. He, He didn't say, go to Nineveh and go to church every once in a while. He said, go to Nineveh and give them the message that I give you. Now, let me put a disclaimer on this message this morning. As we've worked our way through this series, and as this series was in the works a very long time ago, this message today is the one where I felt very much like Jonah, one that I did not want to deliver to myself or to you. And the reason why is because I feel like God has a message for us that is a very pointed message to the church. And so this morning, I'm going to share this very pointed message that I feel like God has given to me to give to you. And it begins here. That today, as Christ followers, as the church... We often want to live our lives in such a way that if we just be a good example, others will see Jesus in us. That that if we just try to not cuss so much or just try to not do all the wrong things so much or just try not to listen to that music or if we tell people we have a church home and we show up every once in a while, then, then our job is done. 
And I want you to hear very clearly that when God came to Jonah, he said, get up and go to Nineveh and give them the message that I give to you. What was the message? Give them the message that I've given to you. Here was the message. You need to go to Nineveh, this place that is evil and wicked. And the bottom line is they're not following my ways and they're not chasing after me at all. And I need you to tell them that they're wrong. I need you to tell them that they're not obeying me. They're not following my ways. I need, to, I need you to tell them, Jonah, that they're sinners. You see now why Jonah ran the other direction? God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh and say, listen, you, you got it all wrong. You, you, you're not following after God. You, you, you're not doing the right. You're not doing the right thing. You, you, you got it all. Can you imagine that message in our day and age when anything is okay as long as it doesn't bother anyone else? This is the same message that God wanted Jonah to deliver to Nineveh. And then He said, "Hey, and not only do you recognize where you're missing it, you need to change it." You, you need to acknowledge it and you need to do something different. You need to change it. Jonah was in essence saying to them, listen, let me just tell you, I know a little bit about this. I ran from God too. I'll tell you what happened to me. And you wouldn't believe it if I told you. But I'm here to tell you that you're sinning. It's breaking God's heart. And he wants you to turn and go the other direction. Do you see that the message God wanted Jonah to deliver to the Ninevites is nothing other than the gospel message? The entire Bible, the entire New Testament, that we are sinners, that we are not chasing after God with all of our heart. And that God wants us to acknowledge where we are failing Him, where we are not being obedient to Him, where we are not chasing after Him. To repent, to turn and go the other direction. Do you see that it's the gospel message? That's what Jonah was to deliver to the Ninevites. We are all sinners. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned. You can read that in any translation you want to. The word all is always there. For we are all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God. But I haven't sinned in a long time. I, I, I'm really doing a lot better with that. I mean, I, you know, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, have you ever lied? Uh, have you ever stolen? Um, oh, here's a good one. Have you ever not obeyed the Sabbath? Those are just three of the top ten. First John 1 John 1.8 says this, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We are all sinners. We are all like the Ninevites. We are all sinners. We all want things for our selfish self. We would all rather do things that bring us pleasure. We all fall short of God. And the Bible tells us, Romans chapter 5, verse, or 6.23, that because of that, we deserve death. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what Jonah was to tell the Ninevites. There's a better way. Find the better way. Go the better way. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I read 1 John 1.8. Let me read 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, for our sake, he made him, Jesus, who knew no sin to become as sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jonah was saying you need to turn 
from these ways. You need to go a different direction. You need to do something different. It's the same message that you and I are faced with. The gospel message. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God indeed raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. That's the repentance part. That's the changing part. That's the going a different direction part. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The message that Jonah was to deliver to the Ninevites was none other than the gospel message. The message that God wants the church to deliver to Americans is none other than the gospel message. Why isn't the message being shared? Why isn't the message being told? Why do we think it's good enough to just be a good example or to go to church every once in a while or to try to live a decent life? Why is it that we are not sharing the message? Oh, Jonah, that prophet, he ran from God. Why is it that we do the same thing? When it comes to sharing the message. I want to give you four reasons this morning. Can I do that? Four reasons why I believe we're not sharing the message. Number one, we have forgotten to pray. This is where we were at last week. Jonah didn't pray when God came to him the first time. Jonah didn't pray when he was in the ship when the storm came up. Jonah didn't pray until he was in the belly of the well in a very desperate situation. Would you call that desperate? That's when he began to pray. And we used that as a launch pad last Sunday to say, listen, let's do this. As a church, every day at 12 o'clock, let's commit together to pray for our country. Let's commit together to pray for the political process. Let's commit together to pray for the election. And I know I've heard stories from several of you who are doing that. I've got a reminder set in my phone. It goes off every day at 12, reminding me at that time to pray for where we're at, to pray for what's going on, to pray for what... I'm going to push that just a little bit farther this morning. And I'm going to ask you to do this. In that prayer time, can you do one more thing for me? Can you pray for that person that you can't possibly imagine being in a relationship with Jesus Christ? All right, come on, let's be honest. (laughs) We all have that person that we think, oh my gosh, they would never be open to the gospel message. They would never be open to the message of Jesus coming and dying for our sins and raising from the dead. They would never be open to that message. If you're sitting there this morning and you're thinking, "I, I don't have anybody like that in my life, can I just give you a word of encouragement? Get out. Get messy. If you're sitting there and you don't have anybody in your life that you can think of, you've been living in a bubble. Pop it. I want you to think of that one person that you know personally, that you can't imagine being open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That one person that you might say is, ooh, they're a Ninevite. And I want you to begin to pray for that one person every single day at noon. I want that one person. I want you to begin to pray for them every single day. And I want you to begin to pray that not only God would invade their heart, but that God would open doors for you to share the message with that person. See, we we have forgotten to pray. Here's the second reason I think the message is not being shared. We have outsourced the job. That's that's big talk in today's political campaign, isn't it? All the outsourcing and all those kind of things. The church is just as guilty. Whose responsibility is it to share the message? Let me try that again. Whose responsibility is it to share the message? Whose responsibility is it to share the message? And we've outsourced that job. I want you to notice in Jonah chapter 3, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Who did it come to? No, no, no. Who did it come to? Oh, 
But this is not a trick question. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Who did it come to? Thank you. Uh, verse 2. Arise, go to Nineveh. Who was to arise and go to Nineveh? Thank you. And in verse 3, so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh. Who went to Nineveh? Oh, let me see. So here's how it works. The message came to Jonah, and Jonah's the one that went. Y'all following me? Jonah didn't wait for someone who has the gift of evangelism to do it. But Jonah was a prophet. Being a prophet and being an evangelist are two very different things. Jonah didn't wait for someone who had that gift to do it. Uh, Jonah didn't wait for the equivalent of a 700 B.C. Billy Graham to have a crusade and do it. Jonah didn't say, the king of Israel should do it. Or the king of Assyria should do it. Jonah got the message. Jonah's the one that delivered the message. Oh, but you don't understand. It's just so uncomfortable and it's awkward for me to do that. And you just spouted off all these verses, Romans 15, 130 and all this stuff. And I don't know that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to share the message. Listen to me. It's real easy. It's real easy. Can you remember three things? If you're a Christ follower, what was your life like before you met Christ? How did you meet Christ? And what's your life like now? Can you do that? It's real simple. The other day I had a phone call from someone and um, that goes to church here and they were wanting to write their story to share the message. And they wanted to schedule an appointment with me to come in so that I could help them write their story. And so we tried a couple of times, and we couldn't connect, and we kept disconnecting, and, and uh, they, they didn't really know where to start or, or how to go there, and so I was just going to try to guide that process a little bit. And finally, the last time we couldn't connect, uh, the person on the other end of the phone said, I don't know, it's just never going to happen. I said, listen, let me tell you this. It's real simple. What was your life like before you met Christ? How did you meet Christ? And what's your life like, been like since then? She said, oh, I can do that. Yeah, anybody can. Why? You know why? Because it can't be wrong. It's your message. It's your story. No one can argue with it. Listen, you can do this much better than I can sometimes because if I do it sometimes, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to say, okay, Romans 5, 23. And you know what? Someone who doesn't know Christ will argue that with me till the end of the day. But when you go in and you say, listen, here's all I know. This is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Guess what? They're not going to argue that with you. Why? Because it's your story. It's your message. You can't outsource your message. Jonah could not outsource the message God had given to him, which was, by the way, just the simple gospel message. Your story is the simple gospel message. You don't have to get all seminarian and theological on it. In fact, I would advise you, don't ever do that. Just share your story. Share your message. There's opportunities for you to do this all over. There's opportunities for you to do it at work. There's opportunities for some of you to do it at home, in your family. And it's hard to believe, but Thanksgiving is coming up. Man, you could have a revival at your family on Thanksgiving. Just share your story. They already think you're crazy anyway. Just share it. You know what? You could do it this Wednesday. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you had a teenager walk up to you and say, would you introduce me to Jesus? When's the last time you had a teenager walk up to you? <laughs> this Wednesday is the annual Fields of Faith here at Jones AT&T Stadium, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. There'll be over 10,000 students from all over the area that gather at Jones AT&T Stadium. They'll, they'll listen to and participate in, in worship music. They'll listen to testimonies of some of their peers. And guess what their peers are going to say? Here's what my life was like before Jesus. Here's how I met Jesus. And here's what my life has been like since then. And, and then they're going to hear uh, some guy get up and share the gospel message. And then at the end of that, they're going to be given the opportunity to respond to that message. And, and if it holds true then over 10%, over 1,000 of those kids will be looking for someone to introduce them to Jesus. 
They flood the field, and these people are down on the field to introduce them to Jesus. All you got to do is show up at Jones AT&T Stadium Wednesday night. You can share your message with a teenager who will walk up to you and say, can you introduce me to Jesus? You can't outsource that. You can't wait for the preacher to do it. He's not very good at it. Trust me. You, you, can't, you can't wait for your neighbor to do it. You can't wait for the other church people to do it. You can't wait for the President of the United States to do it. You can't wait for Supreme Court to legislate it. You can't outsource sharing the message. Here's the third reason. I believe that we're not sharing the message is because we've lost a sense of urgency. We've lost a sense of urgency. I want you to notice that the second time the word of the Lord came to Jonah, this is in Jonah chapter 3, the second time the word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, get up and go to Nineveh, he got up and he went immediately. He got up and he went Verse 4 says, he began going into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He called out. That word there literally means he cried out. It, it literally means that he cried with desperation, the same desperation he had when he cried out to God from the belly of the well. Have you ever been in a situation, maybe you're losing someone, or uh, uh, I, I don't know, this could go a thousand different directions, but have you ever been in a place where you've bargained with God? And you've told God, listen God, if you will just come through for me on this, if you will just defeat that person's cancer, if you will just allow me to regain my health, if you will just save my marriage, if you will just bring my child to Christ, then I will do anything. God, I'll do anything you say. I'll do anything you want. I'll read my Bible every day. I'll pray 15 times a day. I'll do. Have you ever been in one of those moments of bargaining with God? Oh, come on now. Don't get all churchy on me. Have you ever been in one of those moments? And the desperation that you feel that's the same desperation Jonah had in the belly of the well. And he went into Nineveh with that same desperation. But we have lost that desperation. We have lost that sense of urgency. There is no doubt that America is probably more directionless than we've ever been before. I'm not blaming that on the office of president. Did you watch the debate on Monday night? Yeah. It's the most watched debate in history. Because we're probably more polarized. In fact, experts would tell us that we are more polarized today than we were during the days of the Civil War. We have more people than ever saying there's more than one way to heaven than through Jesus Christ. There's no doubt that America is lost and we have lost our direction. But listen, I want you to hear me very clearly on this. The lostness of America is not the major problem. The lack of desperation in the church is the major problem. We've lost that sense of urgency. We've lost that sense of desperation. That's the... <coughs> The reason that the message is not being shared. Let me give you four. I want to give you one more. The reason the message is not being shared is because we're ashamed of the message. Now, when I use the word ashamed, I don't necessarily mean embarrassed by. We are ashamed of the gospel. Here's what I mean. I'm not going to read it to you, but in Jonah chapter 4, if you've been studying Jonah, I hope you've already read this. If you haven't, I would encourage you to go and read Jonah chapter 4 this week. Jonah goes to the city of Nineveh, crying out with desperation, with a sense of urgency. The people, it tells us there in the first five verses, <laughs> they called for a fast. They put on a sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. The king, he comes out and says, listen, we haven't been following after God. We've got to do something different. We've got to change our ways. In the meantime, Jonah goes outside the city of Nineveh, up on a hill where he can see the spiritual awakening taking place, and he pouts. Jonah chapter 4. 
He throws a pity party. And he starts to tell God, listen, the reason I didn't want to go do this in the first place is because I knew that you were so gracious and so merciful that you would spare them and you would give them a second chance. Forget that he got a second chance, right? I knew that you would do this. And so he's having this pity party and he even begins to complain to God. It's hot out here. Can you do something about the wind? Can you, can you help me out here a little bit, God? Here's what I mean by the word ashamed. Jonah was more concerned about his personal comfort than he was about other people's souls. Now let that just sit with you for a while. Because this is the main reason I didn't like this message. Where have I chose my own comfort over delivering the message that God wants me to deliver. Where have I argued that it should be done this way or that way because that's my personal preference? Rather than being concerned about how those who do not yet know Jesus and what their preference is. The reason the message is not being shared is because we're ashamed of it because it's become more about our own comfort than it has those who don't yet know Jesus. In fact, I think what happened up on that hill as Jonah is watching the Ninevites is that he quite honestly becomes jealous Because God is working change so fast in the Ninevites. And I think that I see that sometimes in the church. That sometimes we become ashamed. That when God begins to get a hold of people. Their lives begin to change in ways we never thought they would. I've also seen it work this way. Sometimes in the church when people are just being introduced to Jesus and just beginning to grow with him, we get frustrated that they're not changing quickly enough. They still cuss, they still, whatever, you fill in the blank. Here's what God spoke to me about that this week. People not changing fast enough is not what should concern us the most. It's people that have had the message for a very long time no longer changing that should concern us the most. And this is where Jonah ends. It's really odd if you've read it. God just leaves it there for us. And here's why I think he leaves it there. Because Jonah did his job. Now it's time to see if we will do our job. Will we share the message?